residency is to act as a connection with the community. There's a long legacy to this land that we're standing on now. Being here for six months makes it not about just like, here's an event, here's a talk, here's, here's a thing that we need to do, but more like life. You know, so every day is like something that is like something you look forward to. Or like every day you wake up, it's like what's going to happen today, right? So, and then either something scheduled pops off and you, you, you go and kind of check that off in your calendar or you kind of make something that you didn't even expect. Like remember like um, I had just come back from Toronto after my surgery and then somebody called and said, can you come and scan my photos? And I was like so tired. And you're like, you know, I think you need to go, right? And they're like, okay, fine. And then Carrie was available too, and so we went, and then something magical happened, right? So, and then, you know, was I ready for it? No. But, you know, um, so it's, it's really these moments that are sort of unexpected, and you kind of just connect with them. Because um, at home, I probably would not go, right? Like, at home, you're just like, look, I'll just go another day. But here, you're just like, I'm open to it. And it's not because you feel like you have to do it as part of your residency, but just like, you know, like you're here, you want to connect with people. And it's important to kind of be out there and be seen. So, you know, in, in ways that you probably wouldn't do at home because, you know, like if this was my home sphere, I would probably just say, you know, like this should be private. Mm -hmm. But it, like the role of being such an accessible space, um, makes it a, a bit of a different scenario, right? So it's it's not like um, you're living in a fishbowl. Mm. Like a lot of residencies kind of want you to do, like perform and be in a fishbowl. Mm. This is more like, hey, you're in a neighborhood. So you have to still show up here, right? And then the people that you engage with have to show up. It's mm -hmm. not like they have a right to, to have access to you or the neighborhood. It's like you have to earn that. And I think that's, that's important. Um, so a lot of people hit me up on Instagram or like they text me and say, oh, where's the work? Like, can we see the work? I'm like, no, come here. Oh, what do you mean? Like, you're not, no, it's not about consumption. It's like engage with the people here and then like show that you care, you know, and it's, it's really about that caring. Architect. She designed the entire. Oh, right. Nice. Yeah. So we're gonna go down there and talk about that and too. Look at that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So we always meet in the kitchen, right? Yeah. And I, I think that's really cool because in architecture, the hearth of the home is always like the main space. And in ancient civilizations, when you look all the way back, like the most boring architectural history classes, the first thing that you learn is that any remains of any civilization. It's always an enclosure and a hearth where there's a fire where they gathered and made food and like hung out. And even to this day, that's so, like now this is the modern version of the hearth, yeah. the kitchen. I like that. We gather. It's the center point. Let's do this. And every time we start here, <laughs> yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. When Alejandro Aravena was on his way to get the Pritzker in New York, he stopped at the office where I work. And it's a pretty small office, especially back then, like two years ago. So it was just like him and me and one other person in this room. And I just got to ask him anything. And I thought him winning that award was a turning point in architecture because his work wasn't grandiose. It wasn't a signature that was plopped down in a city or in a neighborhood. It was, how can I be in dialogue with the people in this place? And how can I make their lives better? And so... I, I love him so much for that because he has changed the way we look at the award winners in the architecture world. It's not just the really obscure, really over-the-top work. It's the work that actually means something to people. And in this space here in Charlotte, I thought that it was cool that other people could get a say. And one of the things that is most prominent in his, ar in his architecture is these kind of half houses. After, uh, after the Chilean earthquake several years ago is when he started making these. So he designs a full house and they only build like the most necessary parts of it. And then they leave the people with a plan to finish out the house. Like kind of like however they want. But they have a roof over their heads and it's a much cheaper to build and it's not made with like, you know, horrible materials. So it's 
you know, it's durable and it's easy and it's flexible. And that's what I liked about the space. That it could also be flexible, that when something didn't work, someone else would come in and have their own idea how to make it better. And that's okay, because that's what architecture should be. It should not be about a single person, like, putting their, like, stamp on something. It's about, like, hey, how can we, as a group, make the space better for other people? Yeah. Look at that. It looked like this. <laughs> Isn't that wild to see now? It's crazy. I am. And you can also yeah. gauge the process, man. And yeah, again, so we started, I think we officially broke ground in, it was in, uh, Lord, August? August. <laughs> it's in August. <laughs> what? That was that's really that's recent. recent. Yeah. That's like right now. Uh, we tore down a garage and he was trying to get rid of the woods. So I yeah, I, I love that it's reused because you can see it. I could tell immediately that it had come from somewhere else. I don't know, wood just has that character. Once yeah. it's been somewhere and lived and then place somewhere else. It's like really beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And this is an interesting moment because Nat as architect and Daryl as builder had not had this in dialogue with each other, right? It was like a collaboration in a way that just like is constantly evolving. reflected mm -hmm. in a work of art or mm -hmm. in a project then you're like oh okay like I could do that too like this is not impossible mm -hmm. this is not not some far-fetched dream this is mm -hmm. not some something impossible and that, that's what I like about the work that you've done here mm -hmm. and that's why I wanted to be a part of mm -hmm. it because that's how I actually feel about architecture it shouldn't be this impossible like giant thing that is just so like divorced from your own humanity it's right. mm -hmm. It's within reach. Yeah. Talking about all of the bulldozers in our name. Because before, it's crazy. Remember when we started this project, I was telling you that homies are coming, yeah. knocking on doors, uh -huh. being like, can we buy your house? Oh, wow. Right. And now Sorry. what they're doing is they're without, they're taking now, mm. you know? Yeah. Public use, public purpose claims that say it's going to serve the whole community. Mm -hmm. But then we'll see. It's not going The to. bulldozers are probably like um like a visual pissing you know what i'm saying like yeah. a, like mm -hmm. a pissing on a tree kind of thing like we're here mm -hmm. we might not be doing anything but we're here mm -hmm. it's happening what do you do when you see a marcia because it's a new it's like universal right yeah what do i do a colonization is real it's, it's american life servicing communities of trauma like homelessness the violence basically social workers, mm -hmm. like, and have we set up a modality that takes care of their trauma, because they're absorbing trauma all day long, mm -hmm. right? And so, but what do they do with it? Do they take it home? What do they do with that trauma? And so, in that way, she, she brought in, like, artistic practices and documentation of how they process and get out the trauma that they absorb all day, you know what I mean? I cried, you know me, it takes a lot to make me cry. They made a lot of sense, and she was like, she documented like their office spaces, like their little cubbies or whatever, and like places of like um, peace and solace just right there, like shrines, how mm. people are building like shrines in their cubbies, mm. kind of, you know what I mean? Mm. Like their pictures of their family, yeah. or their, their kids or their husbands and things, it was, it was beautiful, or the, or the cases that were successful and things like that, it was just, it was amazing. She was the working relationship like between you and Jessica right like you came to a place where mm -hmm. there is already this like history and this precedent mm -hmm. and like the, you know with this person and then like yeah like you kind of touched on it before right somebody from like international like outsider comes in so like obviously there has to be like a connection between yeah, us so like yeah. what what's our working relationship like yeah and that's I have really had to think about that um you know um because we had already worked together, you know, so in Chicago, when we met 
around black archives and black you know memory and archive and what that means. Um, so we had a working relationship there, but also then when you were still at the Gantt Center and you brought my show there, but it was about more than just bringing my show here. We were already connected about like you had already mentioned the roll up then and kind of what that idea meant to you personally and that's been something that's been on your mind for quite some time it wasn't just like oh hey how can we continue to work together but you know this was your investment in the community and in creating opportunity for artists and specifically black arts and black artists you know so um so when we worked together this this was another level of just working together because it's not like you had a space and then you kind of just out this is like your space <laughs> So it required an amount of vulnerability on your part to say, hey, I'm offering my space up and, you know, during the time that I'm here, you're also making sacrifices on your part to make this happen, right? So, and so it's it's another level of working together where it's like, okay, this is not just, um, you know, the, the, the artist and the residency space um, offering coming together. It's like... You know, we both have to sort of give and take to make this happen. And I think um, that's something that will have to happen with every artist that you're bringing here, right? So and then, um, so that's a huge emotional and, and, and spiritual investment in your part to say, hey, um, you know, are these people that don't just make work, but like that I, that I trust that they can honor the roll up as a space not just for them, not just as a space for creation, but as your space. Ah, yeah. <laughs> which, uh, these are, this is ephemera from Chun's residency. So like, you know, Brooke Hill matters and he found this object. So he's like leaving things uh -huh. on the space. We went to visit Northwest. They gave him a shirt and wrote him a little letter, which is where Carrie graduated from. So like, Oh, cool... I saw your post about that. Or mm -hmm. Right? What a cool moment for That's professional dope. development. It's actually dope because it's encaustic. So, you know, he's using that oil, tra like traditional oil painting techniques, but like using that wax based media on top yeah. of like a hot plate. It's really awesome. She's too sexy, you know. Uh, Isn't that Wesley? He made that painting, right? You know, Paul Logan. Yes. Yeah, that's a Juan Logan piece. So Look at Jim's house yeah. with, with, with Jessica. From when I was a baby. Oh, is that right? Oh. Yeah. Were you lying on it? Oh my god. It's like that's the first so thing sweet. You know. Get again, Carmen. What did I say? <laughs> said that your, yeah, I feel like I'm at a relative's house, like my uncle's house or something. Yeah. Like Aunt, Aunt Jess's house. <laughs> With and then all of these like uh -huh. photos and stuff are of my distant cousins, right? Like I recognize all this work, all these people. It's like we're part of the same family or group. Mm -hmm. It's familiar, like you said. It's a really fantastic yeah. observation. What has the roll-up provided for you? What is Jessica? I mean, roll-up wasn't just about an artist in residence space. You know, usually like this program is where you, you go somewhere, so you, you seclude yourself for like a number of months or, you know, and then this is a time for contemplation and creation. And then at some point there's a magical show at the end. And then, you know, the next artist comes and then you're out, right? And then maybe the relationship continues, but most times whoever's in is now the artist whose energy is focused um, on the time there, right? And so the roll-up wasn't about that, it was about 
building the relationship before and then using that relationship to kind of create whatever it is that we're doing right it's not just about making art but it's also just enhancing bringing our skills and experience and relationships to the table to enhance what this neighborhood brings to the table and what the neighborhood needs so you know during the time I'm here this was important to really um, focus on as an artist is to really function as a neighbor you know so anytime I step out the house like it's not just about like me being in this neighborhood and just kind of making space, but like, how do I interact with people that I don't even know, right? And not because I want to create an image of whatever it is, but, you know, um, thinking of my presence as a way to enhance the neighborhood, you know, like, what, what does it mean to be a good neighbor? And we talked about this idea of a good neighbor, like, frequently. But, um, oops. Jamis?